The universe forbids measure once, cut twice. So why is remeasuring allowed but recutting impossible? After all, lengths and processes are two sides of the same coin. Einstein's relativity ensures space and time aren't separate entities, but one joint space-time. So what gives? Why can you go back and forth in space, but not back and forth in time? The real answer is deep, but I'll have to lean on a working assumption, that the universe selects for simplicity and structure. Justify it however you want, let's just grant the selection principle and dive into the physics. For structure to form, the universe needs both matter and the forces that make it interact. Modern physics describes these behaviors in terms of symmetries, fundamental transformations of the universe that leave the physical laws unchanged. Think, for example, about rotating the whole universe. If you did that, nothing would change. For forces, we invoke gauge symmetries. Unlike space-time symmetries, gauge symmetries are internal symmetries. If we represent each location in the universe by a basket, space-time symmetries, like rotation, would act by moving baskets around, whereas gauge symmetries would act by rearranging the eggs inside the baskets in a nice way. Without going into too much detail, enforcing that an internal symmetry meshes smoothly with space-time symmetries requires the presence of a force. So the simplest force should be described by the simplest gauge symmetry, and it turns out that the simplest gauge symmetry is called U1, which is a fancy name for a circle. In the basket analogy, it corresponds to simply moving all of the eggs in a basket in a circle. In fact, this simplest gauge symmetry in our universe is electromagnetism, the force that gives rise to structure made of fundamental components of matter. Now, the types of matter that are available are heavily restricted by the space-time symmetries. Each particle type is classified by an irreducible representation of the space-time group, which tells you exactly how that particle behaves under space-time symmetries. So if we demand that the fundamental matter particles are as simple as can be while still taking up space, there is only one option, they have to be fundamental spinners. Now, fundamental spinners come in three flavors, real spinners, pseudo-real spinners, and complex spinners. Of those, only the complex spinners can interact with electromagnetism without having to complicate everything. So then, where do we end up? Well, the simplest space-time symmetry that has complex fundamental spinners is a universe with one space dimension and one time dimension, described by the symmetry SO1,1. But because there's only one spatial dimension, these particles could only move around on a line, unable to bypass each other. And that means no structure formation. So the next simplest one, where complex fundamental spinners are available, is SO3,1, which describes the space-time symmetries of a universe with three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. So we have to have exactly three spatial dimensions and one time dimension in order to have structure. And in a space-time governed by SO3,1, you can reverse direction by a rotation. But SO3,1 has no analog of a time reversal rotation, so time's direction is fixed. And that means that if you start out traveling in one direction in time, you stay traveling in that direction. No traveling back and forth like in space. No ifs, ands, or buts. 